from Matt Rosado. We'll see how that all pans out as we go into the veteran voice of the cage, Dean Stone. Rosado makes his way to the cage here tonight, fighting out of the blue corner, and he just cannot wait. Uh, he is just ready to fight, and these are the kind of fighters we like to see. Your commentators tonight, I'm Steve Inman, joined along with Mike, the Joker guy, and how are you tonight? I am doing wonderful. Well, tonight, uh, so many matchups in the amateur division, we've talked about this many times before. These guys have a huge stage to be able to perform. And to be on national television is a huge advantage for these guys. Yeah, this blows me away. As an amateur, to be able to fight on national TV, get your feet wet like that, it, it's just amazing. I've never, I never thought I'd see this. The only thing you can see this at a professional level, and you can see this on the amateur level, is just amazing. Yeah, you, you talk about the experience of these guys being on TV. Does that, did that add a little pressure to you when you would be on live television? Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Any, the more attention there is on a fight, the more eyes, the more media, the more pressure on you. Any fighter that says anything other than that, they're lying to themselves. <laughs> and they're lying to you, and they're lying to me. Because yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, when we do live events and all that, I'm nervous. I'm like the whole morning, I'm like pacing around, I think that I was fighting. <laughs> we all know how that would happen if I got the cage. Here is Ryan Shuri. Ryan Shuri. Sport will be here tonight. Bed Bath and Beyond. Bed Bath and Beyond. And I'll tell you what, I know that Ryan is a brawler. And to have that ground game is, is absolutely amazing. But when he's his striking, it's just amazing. The, the impact and the, uh, the pain that you feel for his opponents when he hits him. Yeah, it's amazing. And John DeLo in his corner. Uh, awesome fighter and veteran here in the as well. And this is one of those matchups again that we talked about is the, the height fan, the distance that he's got to deal with in the fight is really going to be cool to see how it plays out. Sure. And, and if he's going to stand at bang or if he's like, I'm going to just take this to the ground. But uh, Ryan is very calm right now and, and De La O is just... He's an awesome coach. I mean, when you take a listen to him in the corner, the things he says, just very comforting to his fights. Well, the thing is, he's fought for so many years at such a high level, and he's been a teacher for so many years. He's teaching so many fighters. He's used to it, and he knows what the fighters are thinking before they think it. And so he's able to relay it to him and get him back on page and get him focused, and that's why he's fighting him so well. And the one thing about John De La O is... You know, when he was fighting at one time, he was a lot older than Sean Bias, and he took Sean Bias <laughs> out. I mean, he, he really taught the young kid, like, yeah, he just does a number. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Edgewater Casino Resort, Laughlin, King of the Cage, and Lucas Oil present his three-round belt in the flyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Sensei Cecil Peoples. Introducing first, in our Lewis Oil Blue Corner, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, official weight 133.6 pounds, he represents Uncommon MMA and 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen, from Riverside, California, presenting across the cage fighting out of our Lucas Oil red corner stands at 5 feet 6 inches tall. Official weight 134.4 pounds. He represents Teng La O Jiu Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen, from Garden Grove, California, presenting Ryan Shearing. Once again, your referee in charge, Sensei Cecil Peoples for the final instructions, three rounds of flyweight action schedule. Alright, gentlemen, we're all in the rules. On a good team, fair fight. Protect yourself at all times, follow the rules and all that. Want to touch that up? Do it now. Thank you. Cecil Peoples, our rep in this matchup, he said thank you. Normally he says, let's dance. <laughs>
tonight. He does give the Cecil Slice, though. So. That is his power. It is, absolutely. Scheduled for three 30 minute rounds or less. Ryan immediately comes in with a couple shots. Huge left hook by Ryan right off the bat. And you were, you were saying this earlier about how when you hear Ryan throw a strike, you hear it. You, hear it. you, you feel the impact of the weather. Right now they are clinching up with a nice shot delivered by Ryan. As usual, he's got great counter striking. Being a smaller opponent, that pays dividends for you right there. And right now, Rosado picks him up against the cage. I wonder what happened. We're all wondering. I think she's still explaining to him uh, about a illegal strike. Oh, what he's trying to signal is uh, spiking the point opponent, and I think he was warning his uh, opponent about spiking with his arm in that lockout position. Ryan uses this uh, to switch the tide here. He's now on top. Yeah, that, that, I'm sure Ryan had no problem with that. Like, yeah. yeah, this is cool. Let's restart this. Yeah, yeah. He's up uh, on top here in the side mounted position, and this is not where Matt Rosada wants to be at. Take your tail O. Take him out, take him out. And that's exactly what Ryan's trying to do. And he hears Corman working his head. Telling Ryan to work his head down there, and he's looking for either a submission. Uh, but right now, he's using this position to land some good strikes on uh, Matt. And of course, Ryan representing tonight, got him getting De La O on his trunks. And right now, working from the full guard, trying to create some space. Rosado, to his credit, is doing a good job of avoiding the. The wrath of Ryan. Yeah, anybody coming out of Dillo's group, you know, is going to have a good, solid ground game, ground base. And Ryan is using this ground game to just stifle Matt Rosado in his guard here. A little bit of a mixture of jiu jitsu and some ground and bound. Yeah, and Matt, you know, Matt's doing a good job trying to set up things, but Ryan's having nothing with it. He knows about keeping his arms in tight, how to posture up. And it's really frustrating. He's landing these little strikes. I mean, I say little, but when you're down there and you get hit with these, these strikes and your head's against the mat, oh, it's yeah. magnified. Yeah, absolutely. You see that Rosado's head only bounces like less than an inch. Yeah, and then you see the legs open up like that, you know it's taking a toll on that. Right now, Matt is trying to set up a guillotine. With 10 seconds remaining, it may not be enough. Ryan's doing a good job of posturing up and pressuring into him and keeping that pressure so he doesn't get geeky in this last final second. And that will conclude chapter one. Really good on Ryan's part there. But uh, all these shots that he threw here, Mike, talk us through the replay here. Yeah, right here you see Ryan using that, trying to figure out the distance, landing those big shots like we were talking about. And Matt's, Matt's just trying to figure out what hit him on some of these shots here. And then a couple shots get landed back on, on Matt there, and Matt was able to deliver a couple shots. But then, eventually, when it went to the ground, I think that's where Ryan controlled things, and Rosado's kind of like, yeah, he never took this yeah. to the ground. On that early takedown, this is where Cecil was talking about that spike in the opponent. Well, here we go into round two. So far, Matt has done a great job. Yeah, both fighters doing a great job. You know, I think Matt's a little uh, frustrated with being on his back there with Ryan, having a good, good defensive uh, jiu-jitsu skills he does there coming out of Dalo's group. You know, I, I love the jump kick by Rosado, but he pays for it. Because Ryan's like, yeah, Ryan's like, you know, you're not going to land that up. Yeah. Oh, wow. And Ryan quickly sets up a nice tight arm bar and gets a well-deserved jab right there. Great experience, and like you were saying, it, he took a big gamble on that jump kick, uh, spin kick there. Yeah, there was no dividends in there. It was just an end. <laughs> yeah, right here, as you see what Inman was talking about, he comes in with his jump flying kick, front kick, and Matt just gets taken down to the ground with ease. And then just sets up that arm bar. And Ryan just fighting like a pro tonight. I am really impressed. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some really big things from this kid. Absolutely yeah. 
everything he did was technically perfect, you know, really tight on the submissions, his uh, submission defense when he was on top, looked good, his ground and pound, good kid, you know, big things to come from uh, Ryan here. Note to self, no jump kicks when you're fighting Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 26 seconds of round number two. Your winner, by timeout submission, due to an armbar, Ryan Shearing. When we return, the mixed martial arts action continues here.